the Delta emulator. It's here. I've been using it for a few days now, and I gotta say, I'm actually really surprised how smooth and fluid it runs. And so in today's video, I feel like it's appropriate for me to share with you my favorite tips and tricks, best settings to use, as well as how to apply skins, find some third-party skins created by the community, as well as what are the best controller settings you should try for the emulator. Let's begin. So I do want to go ahead and start off fresh because I hear I have another iPhone that just barely got installed with Delta emulator and you'll be able to find the app directly from the app store. That's the beauty about this app. So better download it while you can, but I hardly doubt Apple's going to take it down because they know what this is. So just type in Delta, let it load and you're going to see it right here and just install it like you would a normal app. I'm going to show you how I was able to change to all these cool skins, what these different buttons could do in terms of how to properly save, how to actually synchronize your save across other Apple devices, including like your iPad, all in this video. So starting off fresh, here is an iPhone 13 Pro. And the only emulator I have here is, is Super Mario 64. And this is basically how the emulator looks like when you first launch it. If you'd like to add more, you will need a Mac computer to at least transfer this file to your file icon on your iPhone. As here I have it saved on my cloud and I also have it shared with my friends. As all we have is our ROMs here organized on our folders. So here I exported a bunch of ROMs for my 64 games from back in the day. And if I want to install all of these, I could simply just select as many as I want. And then on the top core portion right here, just tap open. And then in a matter of seconds, all these will be copied on your iPhone and save to our device and will be added here. Now some of these games are actually blanked. What you need to do to resolve this is just long hold on the title and then where it says change artwork, select game database and here you can look for the game you're trying to import that cover for. And you're gonna see there's a variety of different like mixture of games so you really want to keep an eye out and make sure you're actually importing the right one for that console ROM that you have. Then if you did import like a DS file and you click on it, it's gonna give you this little required DS files. So the files you're gonna to need to look for is BIOS 7, BIOS 9, and firmware bin. And once you locate those, you just simply just hit acquire section and just make sure you're lining them up. So that was BIOS 7, and now we're gonna go in BIOS bio 9, and then here's our firmware. So I'm unable to provide links to where you can find these due to YouTube restrictions. That's why many creators are not talking about the ROMs. But Google is your best friend and it's this information is not so hard to find. But there's also amazing third party adapters, which if you already own like the hardware to some of these like console games, there's this adapter, which is supported by this emulator, which allows you to use your current cartridges, the GB operator. It's only $50. It works from Game Boy Advance games all the way down to like massive cartridges that was found on the Game Boy Color. I'll have this one linked in the description down below so you can legally like export your ROMs which will also include game save data from my understanding. So I personally have already went ahead and purchased one and let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to do a full tutorial about this. And then as for like DS game cartridges, there is these adapters you could buy. There's multiple tutorials on YouTube how to do those. I also also purchased one of these because I do want to have some of my DS games on my iPhone, not just Soul Silver. So I'll be sure to link those in the comment section down below. But just let me know in the comment section if you're interested in for me to make a full tutorial on how to do this. So this is the default skin for the DS, as you see right here. Because on my main device, if I go ahead and launch the same game, Soul Silver, I already have a skin. Now this skin is a third party skin, it's not provided by the uh, developer on this one. If you like to find these out and change your skin, it's super easy. But let me go through the tutorial how to do this real quick. Where you want to go ahead and do this is tap the gear icon on top. Here not only can you create like custom player controllers profiles, I'll go a little bit more in detail on that, but where it says Nintendo, Super Nintendo, where it says controller skins, just click on the skin that you want. Tap on the body style. So right here we have landscape, uh, landscape down here and portrait mode right here. So we're going to have this like layout and landscape will be right here. If you like to add more skins, it's super easy to do so. As all you need to do is just literally type in Delta skins, followed by the console skin that you're looking for, or just Delta skin entirely. The top result will be the official Delta skins themselves. 
from Delta Emulator and you can select the console you're trying to get skins for. So like in Game Boy Advance, they have a bunch of different cool ones like this Goku one. When you click on here, you can like literally tap the download icon on the very bottom and it's going to save directly on your phone. Tap downloads, tap the little download icon on Safari and you can just tap on it right here. It'll automatically take you to it. So in the Game Boy Advance, tap on the skin and scroll down and we'll be able to see it right here so that's how you can actually add these skins now some of these skins that i have personally are like from third parties so that was the game boy advance skin right there that one's not available on their website so what i went ahead and do is just google delta skins and type in game boy advance and then just scroll down to skins for delta and in here you're going to see a lot more amazing ones to select from like these transparent ones that is a massive throwback to this. But they have a bunch of different unique ones. You could either go all traditional like I have done here or something retro and tap download and then repeat the same process. For these third party ones, it's not gonna automatically take you to it, but sometimes it does where you could just do that and tap and it'll automatically show. So if we go back to Game Boy Advance and tap on the body style that we want, you're gonna see it right here. But if it doesn't show up to you, just tap the plus icon and just go into your most recent downloads and tap on it and it'll be able to load up here. Now you can do the exact same thing and like, ooh, this one's actually quite unique. So the same way you install ROMs is the same way you could start installing like different skins up here. I have this website in the description down below for you guys because they have a bunch of different unique ones too. So now with this new skin, let's go ahead and launch a new game. We can resume where we last left off boom this is pretty cool we have the transparent iphone skin so i can see my iphone battery teptic engine right here which is kind of funny so this is actually pretty unique and of course we have the screen will adapt to the layout that we have that we're currently using so as for these two buttons if you tap this button this will break basically allow you to save your game stats right here you can add as much as you want and then in terms of late load games you can literally tap on here and it'll actually load you the game where you last left off exactly. Cheat codes, you can also import cheat codes, very similar to like adding ROMs and such. There's multiple videos about that on YouTube. I'm not gonna do cheat codes, but I am gonna take a full advantage of the fast forward because some of these Nintendo games, you know how long it takes to actually like progress. It's set as a fixed setting, so everything takes forever just to like move on. But as you're witnessing right here, this thing is super smooth, it's crazy. And then if you like to hold a button, like I selected right here. So if it's like a fast paced game where you like sprinting or you have the long hold to like sprint, you could actually designate it so it stays on hold throughout the duration that you want it to. So press the menu button when finished. So we want A to hold, so we're tapping on the menu and resume. And now A is now gonna be our spam button. And to undo, just repeat the process and there you go. But hopping back in the main menu, another thing I like to go over is located right here. So you can actually change the clear capacity of the layout. So whenever you're on landscape mode and the button layouts are in the way, you could actually decrease the capacity. So here we have it at default 70%. If I open up Conquer Bad Fur Day, go in landscape mode, this is the color layout. But if we go back and go in lower this capacity to like 10, you can see it's less, so we can see more of the display. So that's what that allows us to do. I personally would recommend leaving it at 70 if, if this is your only controller that you're using. Now where it says respect silent mode, what this allows you to do is basically if your device is on silent and you have this disabled, regardless on the game you're playing, if you tap resume and your device is on silent, you can still hear, hear the audio. Basically allows you to bypass the silent switch on your iPhone. But if you like it, go based off your silent switch, you can just go back and enable that. I personally prefer leaving this off. Heptic feedback buttons, whenever you're using just a display, whenever you tap on a button, you feel the heptic feedback. It allows you to do that for the buttons or the control stick. Now, device delta services. You can actually sync this across your Google Drive as well as your Dropbox when you log in. So if you have your ROMs all saved on a cloud storage device that's not iCloud like I showed you earlier, you're able to just utilize your existing cloud services that you have if you want to do it that method. Again, I'm personally doing iCloud storage, 
that's native on my iPhone and everything is synchronized across all my other Apple devices. Now, if you like to set one of these games into an app, instead of having to constantly go into Delta and then like select the game right here, like Conquer Back Fur Day as an example, it's super easy to do so. Just long hold on one of these and you wanna tap on the share icon ability and scroll up and you wanna click on copy deep link. From here, now we need to hop into your shortcut apps and we're gonna add a shortcut. Add action, type in open, or actually no, type in URLs. And then where it says open URLs, select this. And here, just paste that URL that we selected. And then tap on the up arrow. And you want to select add to home screen. Once you do this, you're going to add a copy of, like you're going to import a photo that you want the app to have an image of. So I went ahead and typed up Conquer Bath for a day. This looks good enough. I'm going to long hold on it to save for to camera roll. So save as photo. Select here. Choose a photo. The one we previously just scanned and saved. Choose. Add. And then here it is. Although we have to go back and rename it real quick. And here it is right here. And then just click allow. It'll immediately take us to that game just like that. So if you take some time, extra time to organize it, you could easily organize your, all your favorite games on like a dedicated app here on your iPhone to gradually have like something in the home page for you. If it's a game you're currently focusing on for some reason, it glitched, then save the name that we edit. But I'm sure if you do it all in correct order, you'll be able to easily edit that. That's just a quick overview on how to do that, which is quite awesome. Now, when it comes to controllers, all AAA title game console controllers is compatible on an iPhone, an Xbox Series X, one controller, Elite Core or whatever. Uh, Nintendo Joy-Cons also are compatible, PS5, PS4. So long as it's a Bluetooth controller, it's compatible on your iPhone. But a controller that I highly recommend looking into and investing is one of these, these backbone controllers. Because if we take our iPhone 14 Pro right here and hook this up, when we actually load up a game using the backbone, you will see that it immediately removes the overlay buttons for landscape mode. But I do recommend remapping your controllers. Now, if you do pick up the backbone, the only con I want to highlight is it's not compatible with the... Uh, USB-C iPhones. You're going to have to get the Android version for it to work on the iPhone 15s with USB-C. But right now, as you see on my iPhone 14 Pro, the button layout's not properly lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to main menu, go on controller. So on player one, the backbone controller was detected. I'm going to tap customize controls. All right. And over here will give us a library of the different game consoles, right? So we have our DS controller, which we can program and remap. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. You should get the memo. So we're going to go on N64 just for fun. And the buttons I want to change is, let's see. I want the start button to be this one over here. So tap start. And it's just waiting for me to press it to remap it. And bam, it's remapped. But now this menu button for Delta needs to be mapped as I moved it over there. I want that to be this button. And now it's remapped. So we got right, left trigger, joystick controls, Y buttons, D-pad. So it's basically self-explanatory at this point, how to remap it. You just tap on the button you want to program and you tap on the physical button and there you have it. And then once you do that, tap save. And then we go ahead and launch and something like Nintendo 64, Super Mario, mute the audio, go in landscape mode, we have full control right here pretty well, but I need to get out of this before Nintendo copyrights it. So then I just tap here and go back to main menu. You could do as many profiles as you want. Actually, no, correction. You can only do four profiles as you want, as you could do player one, player two, player three. So basically treat these as different controller layouts whenever you have a controller connected. Think of this like what the Xbox Series X controllers, core elite controllers have with the three different profiles you could program or four. Now I did show you that you could create like custom icons, app shortcuts right here on your screen, but you can also long hold on the app itself and it will actually launch like the previously open uh, game you were playing from here directly. In addition to that, you may be thinking to yourself, this is taking a lot of space. 
let's find out. So this is my iPhone 15 that I was using all these like ROMs you were seeing earlier. Let's see how much storage exactly that it has taken away from me. And all those games that we have installed, it only used up about barely a gig and a half. A gig and a quarter almost, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, like a gig and a half actually. That is impressive comparing looking at all these games that we have installed. So this is definitely the ultimate gaming app on an iPhone. And there you guys have it. Those are the cool settings that I'm personally using day to day with this emulator. Comment down below if you have any more recommendations. Again, I'm unable to share with you those ROMs due to restrictions here on YouTube, but this information isn't hard to find on your own, especially if you utilize Google as your search engine. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and comment down below. What are your favorite childhood games that are compatible on here? I'm also looking forward to PlayStation 1 so I can finally play Crash Bandicoot. Hopefully that gets installed or supported in the near future. Thanks so much for watching.